sick to do this gig because uh, I'm a vegetarian, but I've had a couple of lapses in Melbourne because your food is delicious. Now, I secretly went to eat some fried chicken the other day and it was horrible. It was a horrible experience. I now know how homophobic Republican politicians feel when they're blowing a guy in their office. Like, <laughs> oh, I hate it, but I cannot stop. Oh. <laughs> That was me with a fried chicken, and now the chickens are having their revenge on my tummy. <laughs> Loads of comedians are vegetarians, right? Loads of comedians are one of the same two religions as well. Over and over again, we're either Catholics or Jews. Loads and loads of us, Catholics or Jews. I'm what I feel to be the rubbish one of these two. I'm a Catholic. Uh, I'm not practicing, by the way. I'm not an idiot. Uh, I still practice the Catholic contraceptive method, though, because it's frankly amazing for my skin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 32 next month, the secret is jism. <laughs> I'm a Catholic, but I've always thought I'd rather be Jewish. Now, people think I'm taking the piss when I say this, but I, do, I think it's so much cooler to be Jewish because I had a lot of American Jewish friends at university, and whenever they met another Jew, they were excited on a level that does not exist when you're a Catholic meeting other Catholics. My Jewish friends were always like, hey, man, you're in the tribe as well. Are you Ashkenazi, Sephardi? High five, man. What happens when you're a Catholic meeting another Catholic? If anything, it's maybe. Maybe. What's your confirmation name? <laughs> Do you have that thing where you come quicker when you feel guilty too? <laughs> it's not got the same cachet. <laughs> Because I'm a Catholic, I only go out with Irish guys. I sometimes do a Northern Irish one as a palate cleanser. Because <laughs> I love how dirty their accents are, but once you get them in bed, they're all, what's going on, miss? <laughs> they have a ruddy-cheeked sexual purity that is Mwah. I pumped this Irish guy once, and he started coming out with all this dirty talk, and I was like, ugh, this one's broken. <laughs> I mean, the flip side of this sexual innocence is they can be very misogynistic as a nation. And I was in Dublin with a female friend and a drunk man shouted at us for no reason. This man shouted at us, I'd shag you up the arse and I'd shag you up the arse. Right, it was disgusting. <laughs> then I realized, yeah, you'd have to in Ireland because you don't have legal abortion. <laughs> <laughs> Backwards idiots. <laughs> Don't you just be appalled by that, because you have legal access to it in Ireland. They just have to pretend they love boat trips to England. <laughs> if you are offended by that, you should know I'm only alive after two Catholic pro-lifers refused to abort me, and then this little fetus grew up and got opinions of her own. <laughs> See, before the Me Too hashtag happened, I feel like no one believed in catcalling unless it happened to them. If, if, no one, if you hadn't been catcalled before, you believed in it about as much as ghosts or homeopathy. Uh, but I'm never sure if that reference is going to work in Melbourne because it feels like, as a city, you really do believe <laughs> in homeopathy. <laughs> But see, before the, the whole Me Too hashtag, people didn't believe in it, and then Me Too happened, and suddenly people like my dad and my boyfriend, who are not the same person, by the way, <laughs> got in touch to be like, this is terrible that this happens to women, but there's still, every week, some stupid female celebrity will come out with advice on why it's actually women's fault they get sexually harassed. So Joanna Lumley, her that was in AbFab, she said that women should take catcalling as a compliment. Right now, to give her credit, I think Joanna Lumley's picturing an innocent sort of carry-on film world where cheeky builders doff their caps at you, give you a little wink, <laughs> and you both go about your day. <laughs> and not the actual world I live in, where at 7 a.m. in the morning, a man sat opposite me on the underground and dropped his willy area through his trousers while doing this. <laughs> For half an hour. I told my boyfriend about it and he went, 
Maybe the guy was drunk. <laughs> what? <laughs> Listen, I've had night bus journeys home, with Greek Odyssey style night bus journeys home, <laughs> where I have been booted off the night bus for spewing down my tits, <laughs> drooling on the seats next to me, and spewing down my tits a second time. <laughs> but never, ever, in the darkest, drunkest recesses of my wee brain, you know the secret drunk bit of your brain, <laughs> Have I ever gone to myself? Do you know what everyone here is gonna love? <laughs> what do you think about that? <laughs> I'd be sectioned if I did that. That's how much we give guys the benefit of the doubt. Was he drunk? God, it's not surprising though. Nothing, do you know nothing surprises me in life anymore? I do this job because I feel fucking dead inside, right? <laughs> And I wasn't surprised when Brexit happened. I wasn't surprised when Trump came into power. And all around me in the UK, everyone was so shocked by these incidents. People were like, how could people be so stupid as to vote against their own interests? I was thinking, have you met most people? <laughs> most people are idiots. Like every day I get on trains across the country and I watch most people repeatedly jab at the train door button before it's illuminated. <laughs> Even though that has never ever worked. <laughs> and those people are allowed to vote and those people voted Brexit. <laughs> Feels like a safe space to say that, another continent. <laughs> you guys have been fantastic. I love your city of brunch. I've been Fern Brady. Enjoy the rest of your festival. Good night. <laughs>